In 9.2, we're going to talk about some characteristics of quadratic functions and what their graphs look like. So the first thing that we need to talk about is something called a zero. So a zero of a function is the value of x that makes the value of y equal zero. Or, it's another name for <clears throat> an x-intercept. So a quadratic graph may have zero zeros, it may have one zero, or two zeros. So I have an example of each down here at the bottom. One, like the first one, this is my y-axis and this is my x-axis. That graph is never, ever, ever going to touch the x-axis. Comes down, hits at three, and then comes back up. So this doesn't have any zeros. So zero zeros, or no x-intercepts. The next one, though, here is my x and y intercept. I know they're not very dark. The next one comes down and it crosses at two different spots. So it crosses here and here. Crosses at x equals negative 1. And also x equals 1, 2, 3. So that means if you plug in negative 1 or 3, you're going to get out 0. And then finally, the last one only has one y inter or x intercept. So it comes up, it hits at this spot, and then it goes back down. So we have 1, 2, 3, negative 4. So there's only one value that I can plug into that equation to make 0 come out for h of x. So again, the first one, no zeros. It doesn't have any x-intercepts. There's no number that you can plug in here and get 0 out for y. And then the next one, there's two different options. And then finally, g of x, or sorry, finally, h of x, there is one option. So the next thing we need to talk about is the axis of symmetry. So you guys don't have this slide on there. But remember, the axis of symmetry is a line that cuts our graph in half. And then we have a y-intercept. And then we also have a reflection of the y-intercept. Remember, the axis of symmetry means if I were to take my paper and fold it on that red line, I would get the same thing on the left and on the right. So this one is up 3 over 0. So I need to go up 3 still. And this time I have three spaces in between it and the axis of symmetry, so I need three spaces on the other side. So we're going to prove our equation here for the axis of symmetry. One thing you'll find as you get higher up into math classes is that instead of just giving you a formula or giving you a way to do things, you're going to be able to prove it because you know how to do some of the mathematical background stuff. So instead of just telling you how to find the axis of symmetry, let's discover it together. So I have these made up points here. In this case, it's 3, but let's pretend this is for any quadratic function. It has a y-intercept, so that means x is 0. And let's say that y is c. Because back in this equation, remember, if you plug in x equals 0, this is going to cross off, this is going to cross off, and you're going to left with, going to be left with y equals c. So that's where we got the c from. And then we know the reflection of that point, just like the last slide that I showed you. The reflection has to still be at c, y equals c right here. But then we don't know where this one is. It's some question mark ways away. So let's figure out what those two points are. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in c for y up here, because that's our y-intercept. So I have c equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So remember, what we're doing here is we are saying that it crosses the y-axis at point c. That's our y-intercept. We want to figure out what x is going to be in order for that to happen. So we can see from here we have the same thing on both sides. So let's get rid of it. And now we have 0 equals ax squared plus bx. So now we need to solve this, figure out what x is. 
So because it's a quadratic, we can find a greatest common factor to pull out. And both of these things have an x. And then I'm left with ax plus b. And now we can use the zero product property. I have two things multiplied together and they equal zero, so set them both equal to zero. Here's one of my options. Plug in zero for x. And that's what we did up here. I plugged in zero for x and I got out plain old c. The other thing that I can plug in, if we solve this, subtract b from both sides, I get ax equals negative b and divide both sides by a. So the other option is x equals whatever negative b over a is. So you take whatever your b value is in your equation, make it negative, and then divide by a, and that is your other x value over here. That's this question mark, negative b over a. And when you plug that in for x, you're going to get out c for y. You're going to get out whatever the y-intercept is. So now let's go back to what we're really trying to find, the axis of symmetry. And our axis of symmetry is right in between these two points. It's in between where x equals 0 and x equals negative b over a. So how can we find what's directly in between them? We basically want the average of those two points, what's in between those two points. So I have x equals 0 and x equals negative b over a. So if I want the average of these, we add them up and divide by 2. So obviously on the top we get negative b over a. And instead of dividing here, I can multiply by the reciprocal, or one half. So we end up with negative b over 2a. This right here is the way to find the axis of symmetry for every single quadratic function. Because it's in between the y-intercept and the reflection of the y-intercept, directly in between them. Negative b over 2a. So now that we proved where this is coming from, let's use it. So this is the formula for the axis of symmetry. It's always x equals something. Remember, don't just give me a number. I want to know what x equals because it's a vertical line. So you need to find the b value and then find the a value and plug them in. I know these are kind of scrunched together, but this is the first one. Let's rewrite it. So let's figure out our a and our b values. Our a value is what comes in front of the x squared, and since there's nothing there, it's 1. And our b value is negative 2. So now let's plug it into the formula. x equals negative b, so opposite of negative 2, divided by 2 times a, which is 1. If you simplify the top, you end up with positive 2. Simplify the bottom, you end up with positive 2. So here's your equation for the axis of symmetry, x equals 1. How we did this before was we found the two x-intercepts and then got something directly in between them. Not all of these equations that I'm going to give you from now on can be factored. So we can't always just find the x-intercepts and then count in between them. So this equation works all the time. Um, let's skip this middle one and do this one here. y equals negative 3x squared plus 10x plus 9. So figure out what your a and your b are. In this case, a is negative 3 and b is 10. And I'm plugging into the formula. x equals negative b over 2a. So x equals negative 10 over 2 times negative 3. So if we simplify that out, we get negative 10 on the top, divided by negative 6. And then let's turn this into a number that makes some sense. First of all, it's going to be positive, and we can simplify this to x equals 5 thirds. Or you could write it as 1 and 2 thirds. Or you could also write it as a decimal 1.6 repeating forever and ever. 
So now that we know how to find the axis of symmetry, the line that cuts our quadratics in half, we can find the vertex. So remember, we have our graph somewhere in space. The axis of symmetry has to go right through the middle. Whether it goes up or it goes down, your axis of symmetry cuts right through either the minimum or the maximum value. And remember, we called that the vertex. So the vertex, which is the minimum or the maximum, is always located on the axis of symmetry because we have to be able to fold that quadratic in half and get the same thing on both sides. So what we need to do is use the x value for the axis of symmetry, plug that in to find the y value. The vertex is just a point, so you need an x value and a y value. And we know how to find this x because we know x equals negative b over 2a. So let's do the first problem together. Again, I know these are kind of squished. The first problem is y equals negative 3x squared plus 6x minus 7. So what we first need to do is figure out what x equals. So we know it's negative b over 2a. So that gives me negative 6 over 2 times negative 3 or negative 6 over negative 6. So that means x equals 1. So I know part of my point already. I know my vertex is going to be when x equals 1, and then I need to find the y value. So in order to do that, you take that x value and you plug it back in. So we have y equals negative 3 times 1 squared plus 6 times 1 minus 7. So 1 squared is just 1, so I end up with negative 3 here. 6 times 1 is just 6, and then minus 7. So if you add all of these up, we end up with negative 4. So negative 4 is my y value when x equals 1. So there is your vertex. We can do this with the other two examples on there, but why don't you pause the video and try this on your own. You'll get some practice finding um, the axis of symmetry and then also plugging it back in. Alright, so for number two, you should have found that x equals negative four. When you plug that back in, you should have gotten negative one for y. I'm going to walk through number three because I'm guessing most people didn't really know where to start. But in order to find the vertex, we need to use the negative b over 2a. If you remembered from before, you could have also solved for your two x-intercepts. You would have gotten x equals 1 and x equals 4 and found something in between that. And if you did that, you would end up with adding them together, dividing by 2, so 5 halves or 2.5. You would have gotten the same exact thing if you would have foiled the original equation out. You would have had this to begin with, and then negative b would give you 5 over 2 times a, which is 1, or 5 halves, the same thing that we have up here. So whatever way makes most sense to you, go ahead and do. And then, either way, we know what x equals, so now we can plug that back in to get our y value out. And you can plug it into this equation that you foiled out, or you can plug it into the original equation. Both of them will give you the exact same answer. So I'm going to plug it into the factored form. So for this one right here, I end up with 1.5. And I want to multiply that by negative 1.5. And when you multiply those two things together, you end up with negative 2.25. So that's our y value. So that means that we can write this as a point for our vertex when x equals 2.5, y equals negative 2.25. And there's our vertex. And we're done.